And Sunday morning service is not a time for you to show us your nipples in your titties. Where is your bra? How are you coming to church on a Sunday morning to worship God and you have no bra on? No underwear on? Okay, so we don't wear girdles no more. But have you ever heard of Spanx that keeps you from jiggling like that? I heard this interesting bit about Jonita Beanham, the well-known evangelist and gospel singer. She's such an interesting figure. Born on January 16, 1959, Dronita is an American gospel singer, author, and pastor. She's got an imposing background. Back in 2006, she released this amazing album called Peace of My Passion, which actually reached no. 55 on the Billboard 200 charts. Pretty cool, right? What's even more impressive is how the New York Times described her. They called her the most prominent black female television evangelist in the country. That's a huge deal. Oh, and she's also an author. One of her notable books is The Threshing Floor. She's definitely someone with a lot of influence and a powerful voice in the gospel and Christian community. She recently had a pretty bold message for female worshippers. She straight up told them to put a bra on. At first, it might sound a bit unusual for a church setting, but let's break it down. Her main point was about modesty and presenting ourselves respectfully, especially in a place of worship. She's emphasizing the importance of not being a distraction to others while we're trying to focus on God. In 1 Timothy 2-9-10 it says, I also want the women to dress modestly, with decency and propriety, adorning themselves, not with elaborate hairstyles or gold or pearls, or expensive clothes, but with good deeds, appropriate for women who profess to worship God. Bynum's message aligns with this idea of modesty and self-respect. She's essentially reminding us that while God loves us as we are, it's also important to show respect in how we present ourselves, especially in a worship setting. It's about being mindful of our surroundings and making sure we're not drawing attention away from what's really important. What do you guys think? It's an interesting take, right? Absolutely, it's a fascinating topic. Dronita Bynum's message might seem a bit blunt, but it taps into some deeper themes about how we honor God and respect our fellow worshipers. Think about it this way. When we come together to worship, the focus should be on God. Our appearance shouldn't distract us or others from that purpose. In 1 Peter 3-3-4 it says, your beauty should not come from outward adornment, such as elaborate hairstyles and the wearing of gold jewelry or fine clothes. Rather, it should be that of your inner self, the unfading beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is of great worth in God's sight. Bynum's message is a practical application of this scripture. By encouraging women to dress modestly, she's promoting an atmosphere where the focus remains on worship and spiritual growth, rather than on appearances. It's also worth noting that this advice isn't just about women. The underlying principle of modesty and respect applies to everyone. For example, men are often encouraged to dress respectfully in church as well. It's about creating a space where everyone can focus on their relationship with God without unnecessary distractions. Sometimes, messages like Bynum's can be hard to hear because they challenge our personal choices but they can also prompt us to reflect on how our actions affect others and the communal worship experience. In Romans 14.13 it says, Therefore let us stop passing judgment on one another. Instead, make up your mind not to put any stumbling block or obstacle in the way of a brother or sister. This scripture reminds us to consider how our behavior might impact others. Bynum's call for modesty can be seen as an encouragement to help create a distraction-free environment where everyone can worship freely and without hindrance. So, what's your take on this? Do you think messages like these help maintain the focus on worship, or do they come off as too controlling? Hear this from Juanita Beanham the well-known evangelist and gospel singer. I've never seen in this hour so many women that are Christians and you're, you are in service, in the service of the Lord, ministering the gospel with your cleavage all the way down here where I can see the crack 
of your breast. Something has gone wrong. Oh, I know the Bible said we come into the body of Christ as babes. I know we, we, we use the terminology, people, that we ought to come as we are. But why is it that we're coming as we are, but we're staying as we are? That skirts are so tight and so short until half of your thighs are out and you're ministering. And I can't even, I can't even get to the concept of somebody preaching and leading praise and worship with no stockings on, with thongy, stringy shoes on, and your legs all greased up. What kind of message are you trying to send us? Any minute you can just go over in a corner to a deacon and just raise your dress up and hit it right there in the corner because you don't even have drawers on. You got on thongs and some greasy legs and a bip bop skirt and you are our praise and worship leader. Something is, is absolutely positively wrong with that. And then Sunday morning service is not a time for you to show us your nipples in your titties. Where is your bra? How are you coming to church on a Sunday morning to worship God and you have no bra on? No underwear on? Okay, so we don't wear girdles no more. But have you ever heard of Spanx that keeps you from jiggling like that? For some reason, the women of God in this hour don't want to put on clothes. And I don't know why. Because we finally got enough money to buy titties. And now everything you wear got to be tight, got to be sexy. Sex appeal is on an all-time high. Not worship, not brokenness, not Lord, here I am. Not God purge me and cleanse me. Where is the scripture that says that women ought to dress in modest apparel with shame face? We're not shame anymore. And there's something wrong when the Holy Ghost in you don't ever say to you, that's too tight. How is it that you don't think it's too tight when it's so tight in the front that you can actually see the print of your vagina? Really, y'all, come on. And it hurts. It hurts because we're the Christians. It hurts. And we're the Christians and we looking like hoes. And Welcome. Voice activation required. I go to church. Access denied. Um, I pay my Titan offering. Access denied. I'm a philanthropist. Access denied. I pray and fast. Access denied. I pray and fast. Access denied. I believe in Jesus. Welcome. Oh, oh thank God. Here is what she said. I hope you're all doing well today. I have something heavy on my heart that I need to share with you. This comes from a place of love and concern, both for you and for who God has called you to be. I realize that what I'm about to say might be difficult for some of you to hear, and some of you may even decide to unfriend me afterward. But I feel it's important to speak up. Have you ever felt like we're trying to move forward while also backpedaling at the same time? It's like we can't tell the difference between believers and unbelievers anymore. This isn't just about appearances. It's about the state of our hearts and the messages we're sending. As Christians, we are called to a higher standard, and part of that includes how we present ourselves. In 1 Timothy 2-9-10, Paul writes, I also want the women to dress modestly, with decency and propriety, adorning themselves, not with elaborate hairstyles or gold or pearls, or expensive clothes, but with good deeds, appropriate for women who profess to worship God. This isn't about being old-fashioned. It's about respect and reverence for ourselves and our faith. Lately, I've noticed a trend that's troubling. Many women in our churches, even those ministering and leading worship, are dressing in ways that are, quite frankly, inappropriate. Cleavage is on display, Skirts are too short and tight, and sometimes there's a complete lack of undergarments. This isn't about being prudish. It's about understanding the context and showing respect for the sanctuary and our roles within it. We often hear come as you are, and that's true. We come to Christ as we are, with all our flaws and brokenness. But we shouldn't stay as we are. Romans 12-2 tells us, Do not conform to the pattern of this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Part of that transformation should be reflected in our outward appearance, especially when we're in church or in a position of leadership. Let's talk about worship leading and ministering. If you're up there in front of the congregation, your focus should be on God, 
not on drawing attention to your body. 1 Peter 3-3-4 says, Your beauty should not come from outward adornments, such as elaborate hairstyles and the wearing of gold jewelry or fine clothes. Rather, it should be that of your inner self, the unfading beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is of great worth in God's sight. It's heartbreaking to see so much sexual promiscuity within the body of Christ. We should be striving for holiness, not trying to look sexy or appealing in a worldly sense. Proverbs 31.30 reminds us, Charm is deceptive, and beauty is fleeting. But a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. There is a time and place for everything, and Sunday morning service is definitely not the time for revealing outfits. It's about worship, about coming before God with a humble and contrite spirit, not about showing off our bodies. Modesty and decency should be our aim, as it's written in Titus 2-3-5. Likewise, teach the older women to be reverent in the way they live, not to be slanderers or addicted to much wine, but to teach what is good. Then they can urge the younger women to love their husbands and children, to be self-controlled and pure, to be busy at home, to be kind, and to be subject to their husbands, so that no one will malign the word of God. I'm not saying we need to dress like old fogies, but there should be a balance. Dressing in a way that respects ourselves and honors God should be our goal. We are temples of the Holy Spirit, as 1 Corinthians 6 20 tells us. Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit, who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own, you were bought at a price. Therefore honor God with your bodies. It's not just about clothes, it's about the heart behind the clothes. When our focus is on God, our outward appearance will reflect that. So let's strive to honor God in all that we do, including how we dress and present ourselves. Let's be mindful of the message we're sending, both to ourselves and to others. Thank you for hearing me out. This comes from a place of deep love and a desire to see us all grow closer to God and reflect His holiness in every aspect of our lives. In conclusion, this message about modesty and how we present ourselves in worship settings is shade out of deep love and a desire for us to honor God in all aspects of our lives. It's not about shaming or condemning anyone, but rather encouraging a heart transformation that reflects in our outward appearance. As Christians, we are called to a higher standard, and part of that includes dressing modestly and respectfully, especially when we gather to worship. Let's remember the words from 1 Timothy 2 to 9 10 and 1 Peter 3 to 3 4, which remind us to focus on the inner beauty that pleases God and to dress in a way that honors Him. We are temples of the Holy Spirit, and our bodies should reflect the holiness and reverence that God calls us to. By being mindful of our surroundings and ensuring that our appearance doesn't distract others, we create a more respectful and focused worship environment. So, let's strive to present ourselves in a way that honors God and respects the sacredness of our worship settings. Let's continue to grow in our faith, showing the world that we are set apart, not just by our words, but by our actions and appearance as well. Thank you for listening and understanding. May God bless you all as we walk this journey together, striving to honor Him in every aspect of our lives. Let's have an open and respectful conversation about this. What do you think about this take on modesty in the church? How can we balance looking beautiful while honoring God in our worship settings? Share your thoughts in the comments below. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for more discussions like this. God bless you all.